All right, man. Here we go, man. Footballville. We outside. We outside. Uh, uh, we've been inside the last few days, but we we close enough to outside. <laughs> we, <laughs> He's saying we outside from inside, folks. <laughs> I'm confused, bro. Yeah, man. It's, it's a ment- it's mental. It's a uh, yeah, man. We whatever. <laughs> Sitting here with man with Marco Wilson, man. Uh, Arizona DB uh, Marco, and uh, what's what, what's what's cool about this is uh, Marco sitting next to his dad, Chad Wilson. You, um, does he think that's cool? You think that's cool? Yeah, it's cool. Who run the house, Marco? Mom yeah, for, or dad? Yeah, for sure. Dad wow, straight to it, boy. <laughs> we went straight to it. Yeah. Oh no, cause mom is like one of them silent killers, bro. Like, bro like, no, she, she definitely she, is. She, yeah, definitely yeah. Puerto Rican. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Marco, you played on a, a, a football team that was – right now, I mean, how many of y'all in the NFL right now? You got sports, retain. It, it, it's more than 10. Right? More I think than, it was like 12 or something. Tw- I think like, I sent a post the other day. It might yeah. be 12. Yeah. Like, like 12 of you guys um, – yeah, it was like a record they said. Like 12 of mm-hmm. you guys went, went to the NFL. Uh, yeah. When you look back to that team um, – how, how do you see it now? Now that you big time, you you rock around with a man purse. I mean, you you, you you're on a different level now. But how do you how do you when you look back uh, to that? Like, how do you see it? I think honestly, it's the best high school football team ever. You think so? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think can't nobody mess with that high school team. No. Nobody. Your last year was y'all completely undefeated or how? how? <laughs> we took an L in the um, preseason. Against but, who? Booker I mean, T or somebody? Yeah. yeah. But then, how, how do I remember that? Shout out to Booker T. <laughs> but then, I mean, yeah, we was undefeated through the whole season. After yeah, that, ran through yeah. the whole season. Um, you were on one side, and the other side was Pastor Tain. Yeah. Um, as good as you were, all the hype always went to Pat, right? How things, how things, how, how the media the works. Yeah. Yeah. As you, as you in the middle of that, as a kid, not older you now, mm-hmm. as a kid, how did you, how did you see that? Did you care? Did it matter or? No, nah, I didn't care. You didn't matter? Because we was all getting to it. And then yeah. usually if you all getting to it, I mean, it don't matter who's getting what. Yeah. I mean, you, you happy with what you got going on. All right. So, well, Chad, yeah. you did a good job there, man. He wasn't petty <laughs> like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's uh, always been in that mode of just being happy for his teammates and stuff uh-huh. like that. Something that he still has going to, to this day. I think that's a great quality, especially in this day and age. You know, there's so many guys that don't, you know, subscribe to that theory. You know, yeah. there's always a little animosity within a team, and you know, in the, in the fabric of a team, you can't really, can't really have that. So yeah, so, I appreciate that quality <laughs> in the young lad. Appreciate that quality. Yeah. Me and Chad have conversations about you and your brother, man, numerous times, and he talked about how y'all were different. Mm-hmm. Um, he took you out of youth football and put you in middle school ball, which doesn't really exist. Yeah, to describe there. describe to the people at home. <laughs> that brand of football and how you actually <laughs> felt about it at the time it go was, ahead throw me throw me uh, into the fire Dude. it was easy it was way too easy uh-huh i it was fun though it was fun yeah it was fun why, i had fun because i was just i mean i'm getting the ball going around the corner it's touchdown <laughs> <laughs> like i know what time it is every time yeah I, I had fun i mean and i guess at that time like that's what football is supposed to be i mean it's fun everybody's not gonna be like yeah. crazy competitive at that age i understand right. that but I enjoyed it. It was just a little different at first because, like, I went from AYFL, which was, like, right. pretty competitive. Right. And then now I'm just running past these little kids from private school. How did that happen? What, did you just walk in there and one day and say, man, we, we going next year, we going to play? Did, did they give some pushback? Did they start, like, losing their helmet on purpose? Like, how did, uh, how no. did it go? No, we did 17 games in one season uh-huh. and because they had a, a state tournament. Uh, at the end of the year, uh, yeah, or I remember that. no, we actually, you know, it was actually the kicker for me. We went out of state to do a whole out of state tournament, and the final was us versus Boynton Beach in Atlanta. It's like we could have solved this at home. So it's too, it was too many games I felt for for little league, which is crazy now because these kids would do twenty four games in the season, like basketball. Or something. But I was you like, that they hitting each other. I was really worried about the wear and tear. Yeah. You know, um, let's have some balance. Let's be able to do some other things. And so um, I told Carmen, I was like, we, we're not. We're not doing that? Yeah, we're not doing this again. Because it's 17 this year. Mm-hmm. It'll, be, it'll be 20 the next year. And then where does it end? So I said, right. let's just go to Little League. None of this stuff really matters at this point right now. I just need him to like the game and continue to enjoy the game. Right. Because when he gets to high school, I don't want to be pulling him along to do the things he needs to do. I want right. him to, to 
still have love for it and go on his own and do it. I'm mm-hmm. going to still be there, but I don't want to be telling them, let's go, or he's, mm-hmm. you know, just blowing on it. At the time, I'm not sure he was feeling that, obviously not, because, you know, I took him away from his friends and actual competitive right, football, right. but I don't know, man. A couple of them pick sixes and handoffs, he was, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling this. Yeah? yeah. What, what, what junior high school was it? University school. It was, it was, it was your school? Yeah. yeah. I think they had one legit game against Berlin when they brought 110 boys mm-hmm. to come play. Other than that, right. it's Miami Country Day. And no. Heritage Del Rey. Heritage had a team too? Heritage Del Rey yeah. had like two good players on the team, I remember. Yeah. I think we played them in like a Super Bowl championship game, whatever we had that year. But yeah. it was eight games. Which was fine. It was only eight. It was eight games. A championship and all of that. Yeah, and then we good. We good Quick with that. Season. Yeah, <laughs> go ride your bike. Go play video games. Go do. Nah, something he else. made me actually play basketball that year. I hated it. You need to do something else. Hated basketball. How you gonna love? How what you? you like how you gonna man? know you love? What you like <laughs> the hustle man out there fouling people? Definitely <laughs> was all defense. That is for sure. I hated it. Yeah. yeah. Terrible. When he told you I was going to play middle school ball, were you mad? Did you know any better? Like, did you? Mm. How do you and Quincy like take that? Like, uh, I'm not sure how my brother took that, but at first I was just a little confused. But then I just went with the flow, honestly. Right. Yeah. You didn't know. It, it, well, Quincy went through. I think he went through. Mm, he went through seventh grade. Yeah. Eighth grade, he played. He played middle school ball. Gotcha. So he went through it a little further. I took him out after fifth grade. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah fifth grade was my last year. Anyway, and I'm, you so you just out there, the man, scoring two, three touchdowns a game. Can't do nothing with you. Yeah. Easy. And it's the school out there watching this? Uh, Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes they'll be out there watching. It, it, it was fun, too, because, like, another one of my friends that actually played at West Pines when we came to U school and uh-huh. played, like, he was actually my quarterback. So yeah. that made it. It was cool. I was like, eh, we who, just, who was Henry Columbia. Okay, yeah. Columbia. Yeah, 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 Henry, yeah, Henry came with me, so I was like, man, it's like, got my it, homie here with me. <laughs> We're going to have some fun. But it made y'all pretty cool at school then, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this kind of like translated to like real life. Like this ain't like PPO <laughs> where people got to come find you. Like yeah, that also was the cool. That was the cool part too. Yeah, you leaving school early for the game yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was cool. And then from there, you go to American Heritage. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I went. I did freshman year at U school. Oh, you was at U school with yeah. With and then after my freshman year, I went to American Heritage. And then and then you go to American Heritage. Um, being non-competitive in football for like what, what three years it was, mm-hmm. four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you, did you, did it? Was it a drop off once you got back with the dogs again, and you like, you ain't in practice? No, nah, I don't. Th- your fingers. I don't think so, cause at U school I was still around like the high school team as mm-hmm. well. So like when I got to like eighth grade, when my when my middle school season was over, I was able to like go with JV guys and stuff. Yeah, and then freshman year I was just around the high school guys and stuff so it was just always and then on top of that I was going to slide and stuff and all that on the okay weekend, so. yeah we forget these kids yeah. train all the time. yeah <laughs> yeah it's a different you, you <laughs> Sam Bruce on yeah. the weekends like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah so it was, it was right. fun it yeah that's yeah I forgot about all I forgot about all that's a different level of football down here um so when you go to American Heritage are you, and you're at American Heritage too with them right I got they had a rule back then so it you left the school, and kids from the school you were at also left. You can't coach for a year. Okay. They had that silly rule. So it's um, a state rule. Or I don't was know. It school. Who, rule? I just knew it was a rule. So yeah. for a year, I had to sit in the stands. But it was actually really, really good for me. It, it ended up being a blessing. But um, Burns came from there, um, and, and like four or five players left U school and came to Heritage, so I couldn't coach. So I had to sit in the stands and kind of watch things. And I just, I was able to see things from a bit of a different perspective. Because once I started coaching high school football, I had continued coaching every year. And that year I was able to sit back and just kind of watch stuff. You know, it's like when these coaches leave and they go in the booth and then they come back, you know, they go do broadcast and then they come back and they're pretty good. Yeah. I got a chance to see a bigger, bigger piece of the pie and picture and notice some things and then made me a better coach when I came back. Got you. That American Heritage team, it was used for 10 and Campbell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm talking about, <laughs> did anybody like compete a pass on you? Like, really? Like Very few times. Chad, you was the defensive coordinator eventually, right? Yeah, the the year, his senior year. 
Uh-huh. I was a DB coach the year before. He was right. hurt that year. He tore his ACL. But the senior year, I was a defensive coordinator and a DB coach. So, uh-huh. yeah, passes got caught when they were just out there. <laughs> but when they turned it up and they were on, they were on ten. It was very hard. Who were the safeties? It was Tyson. Uh huh. Then we had Blake Wooden. Uh huh. Anthony Schwartz would go to safety sometimes. Schwartz would play too. safety sometimes. Yeah, who else? We Mike had Hicks. There? Mike Hicks was in yeah. safety. Yeah, we had. Mike so Hicks. Campbell would play safety in, in in high school more so. He was more so a safety. He's more like a cornerback now, right? He was. Yeah, that, I mean that's strictly what he is now. But right. at that point, he was raw. He had just come over from running back. You know, he was still developing his gotcha. cornerback yeah, DB skills. Right. He was our best tackler, though. Mm-hmm. So I could have him back there free safety, and he's not going to miss. He's a damn good tackler. So yeah, um, it just made sense to put those two on the outside, put Tyson back there. Yeah. He was fast as hell, so something stupid popped off. He could fix He could fix the problem. Right. And then on third down, I'd move him inside because he was really versatile, and I'd bring, I'd bring Tyson down on the outside. And then Schwartz had been bothering me for so long. I said, you know what? Go back there. If anyone does anything stupid, go get them. Get them on the ground. Give us another down. So right, worked out just fine. <clears throat> we just interviewed Rod Mack, and um, he's one for one. His son, he played at UM. He goes to UM, right? Mm-hmm. Your dad's 0 for 2. Like, it wasn't even close <laughs> either. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't the – I don't even know if it was visits. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I don't even know if it was Different visits. coaches. <laughs> what? Different coaches at the time. By, by the time you came through, because we've told the Quincy story and how that happened and how you and wasn't mm-hmm. recruiting Quincy how he was supposed to, you yeah. know what I'm saying? By the time you came through, what was the relationship between your dad, UM, and the recruitment? It was great. It was? Yeah. It was, yeah. It was real good. They were going, UM was going hard for me. They, oh, they were? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Um, so how did, how did you end up at Florida? Like, how, talk to us about that. I mean, I just thought it was the best decision because my main thing was I wanted to play early. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get good coaching. I committed when Coach Gray was the coach, really. I loved him. Yeah. And then it was really playing early and great coaching. Really? Because I knew I wanted to go to the NFL. Yeah. I mean, you say the whole, oh, they have good education and stuff. I mean, yeah. (laughs) But I knew I wanted to go to the NFL, and I knew I was going to go there, play early, and get great coaching. And I was just familiar with it because I had always been You had always been there because your brother, brother play. Yeah. Your but brother it was, was honestly, it was closer than what people think. Between which two decision. schools? I really wanted to go to USC. You had visited USC? Mm-hmm. You had went with them to USC? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. And what, yeah. what was about USC? Everything. I loved everything about it. The one thing that was like a deal breaker for me, I just didn't, I wasn't really feeling the DB coach at the time. I think if they had a better DB coach, I probably would have committed to USC. You think he he he? You think yo, y'all would have let him go across it wasn't, eight, eight hours? <laughs> no, it was, no. Listen, hours. first of all, it wasn't any let. But with the one thing I will say about both Quincy and Marcos, they mm-hmm. were both mature enough to make that decision. Yeah, you know they had. Um, I did the same thing with Quincy um, that I did with Marco. We'd go on the visits, let him enjoy the visits. When we're done and we're on the way home or afterwards, I say, hey, what did you see? And the answers you get from them will let you know if they if, if they moving in the direction <laughs> where they can make this right. decision and it's not going to be something <laughs> stupid. Oh, they got dope cleats. I'm trying to go there. Like, <laughs> I tell Carmen, man, we might have to get involved. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, no, they matured. He, uh, he saw all the right things. And so, man, if he wanted to go to USC, fine. I mean, I got... Half of my family, my father's side is out there. Oh, out there. You did, yeah, and I finished high school. I finished high school out there. We would have yeah. been, we would have been yeah. just fine. Right. Um. You know, my my brother's out there. He'd have been well taken care of. It's just what he said. You know, the DB coach was not. So what did you like? If the DB coach <laughs> was it, just loves Los I, Angeles. I love the, the, the city. I love the the school. The campus was fire. I like Clay. Help. I like the head coach. Yeah. He was cool. I mean, the tradition of the schools, yeah. like USC. The private school, right? Yeah, I yeah. mean. And then, I know me, I'm like an artistic type of person, so I feel like just being in that type of environment, I could have maybe met people that would have helped me boost that. Right. I just, I just really liked it. I've been to LA a few times in the last few months, man, and it's fake hot. I didn't realize that. Nah. It, looked hot. it looked like that outside, right? And you think it's hot like Miami, and you go out yeah. there and you need a coat. Yeah. Um, and then they come here to Miami and can't walk around for 30 minutes because it's really hot here. Full sweat. Yeah, it's a different... You better that, put your degree <laughs> on or you don't have a problem. I, I, don't, I don't know which one... I, I don't know which one I like the most because I'm just used to this, but that is cool for it to look like it's hot and it's actually breezy. Mm. 
Um, I found that to be unique. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things he likes. He did. He liked yeah, the weather. The weather. Crazy. That's what yeah. captivated me going out there in that summer times. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so eventually it comes down and you say and you say Florida. It came down mm-hmm. to Florida, USC, and it was just those last two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I honestly wanted I wanted Ohio State to recruit me more. I think I would have I, I would have considered them too. Yeah, but they kind of recruited me a little bit in the beginning, and then kind of just stopped. Yeah. they would were you, li- they were a little chapped after Quincy shunned them. I guess. Would you, would you tell kids that, hey man, if the school ain't feeling you, feeling you like, oh don't, don't go for sure. But, yeah, go, talked go, about that go, a little bit. I would for sure tell like. It's, that's with anything, like, you don't want to be someone's second option or someone's yeah. little backup. I mean, if that's your only option, go ahead, take it. Yeah. But if you got if you got options to go anywhere, don't go somewhere where you just they next guy. Like, yeah. they need to be loving you. You need to be their guy. Like, I think sometimes kids yeah. do get caught up in what your dad just said. It was a joke, but they get caught up in brand, what they see on ESPN, yeah. and they want to be a part of it. And it's like, where do I fit in? Yeah, you gotta you gotta make the best decision for you. Like right. you can easily go to a smaller school, but if you the man at that school, yeah. When people think of that school, they don't think of you. So your name is just always gonna be in, in the chatter. So right. It's just all about what you make of your situation. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff matters too, man. I think uh, kids will get they'll get told, oh, we are afraid of competition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I, I've always said this, especially I think I've tweeted it several times. Kids don't fear competition they fear agendas mm-hmm. you can't tell me a kid that goes and runs track uh that does all these seven on sevens that that man, goes out and does one-on-ones and then and then is playing at some of these high schools and playing in these games that they fear competition no there's no way they fear competition you don't get to this point if you fear competition what they fear is an agenda so me and another guy comes in and i know you've promised this guy the world i go to the i go to let's say i go on a visit with him and the coach has got his arm around him patting him on the back blah 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 we can go out there and i could be beating this dude out and you love this guy so you're gonna find ways to get him on the field you might cut my reps you might put me at nickel when I'm supposed to be a corner. Now right. there's a whole agenda. Now it's not just me versus him. Right. You know, it's like two kids boxing and the dad is standing there, like <laughs> stopping me every time I'm whooping the kids with rear end. So they yeah. fear agendas. And so that's a real thing. You, you really do need to go where they, where they want you there. Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll make things happen. Yeah. Quincy's always, already at Florida, right? Mm-hmm. When he's being recruited. Is Quincy having a, a good time at Florida? Like, is it? Has it been rough for him? Like, what what was going on? No, he was he was having he was having a good time. I mean, yeah. you know, there was a build up. You know, he definitely had that freshman year where okay, I'm feeling things out. Then the sophomore year, it's me and T's Tabor battling. They kind of pit those two against each other, right. which ended up making them, you know, good. You know, it was. Iron sharpening yeah. iron, the competition right. made them better, but he felt like he was moving in the right direction. So, you know, he was out there playing and he would mm-hmm. he would go to the games. That definitely helped. Yeah. You got familiar. You got familiar being in the swamp, being in the locker room, being in the weight room, yeah. being by the dorms. Yeah, so I kinda felt like I was already going there a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you knew everything already, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. If you had a chance to do it again, would you throw the shoe? Oh, like, 100%. I'd probably throw it further. <laughs> That actually would have helped him. I always say the worst thing you did was throw the shoe right towards the referee. If he had thrown it out of bounds to, like, say me, perhaps, because I was only sitting six rows up, you might have got away with it. But You said you'll throw it further? Yeah, no, listen, if you throw a shoe right in a, in a game now, it's a chance you may or may not get a penalty, right? Mm-hmm. It's almost like a thing, like. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not like a, I don't think it's cut and dry. I think it's based off the ref's feelings on what he's seeing, like. If that was crazy enough or not. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe if I would have just slammed it into the floor, <laughs> it would have got a flag. Yeah. It's a football game. This is yeah. what people don't give. This is what people never think about. It's a goddamn football game, right? And people don't realize the emotions. You got 50, 60,000 people in the stands. You're not always thinking, thinking. Like, it's not like you're always calculated, you know what I'm saying, and, and within those emotions. It's moving too fast. Right. Uh, they don't understand. I was, that was the yeah, most. Yeah, tell a reason. The, tell, no, tell most, like, what would. That's what, the what, most turned up I've ever been in the game, I think. <laughs> nah, because, I mean, it's my last game at Florida. 
I, 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 I'm, I didn't really enjoy a lot of things at Florida, but one thing I did enjoy was playing in the swamp because it was always turned, always lit. So I'm like, man, it's my last game in the, in the swamp. Man, I'm just turn up. We playing LSU. Like, it's a rival game. I yeah. don't like LSU. Right. And game starts. We just out there playing like we doing BS. Like, we not on our, on our, on our deal. Then I'm going on in the field every 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 drive, and they're trying to throw fade balls with a little freshman wide receiver. I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, <laughs> why are you fade trying to fade me up with a freshman wide receiver who can't get off the line? I'm getting irritated that you keep trying this. So now I'm turning up on the on the quarterback every time he's trying to throw a fade ball over here. So I'm already geeked up. Then I'm on the sideline. We throw a pick six to Eli Ricks, and on the way to the end zone, Kyle Trash chasing him, and he like stopped at the goal line and like look back at Kyle Trask. I promise you I stood up on the sideline was turned. I was so mad. I was like, nah, I'm not we not going out like this. Like right. LSU is what, four and seven right now? Yeah, like, that's what we it was supposed down. to play Bama next week. What are we doing? <laughs> like, come on. Go Tigers. Like, what are we doing? So I was just teed up the whole game and in that moment I tackled dude. I think some people still think to this day that like I went and picked up the cleat. Like I tackled him and it came off in my in hand. Your hand. So Third down, you just try to hurdle me? Are you crazy? Like, <laughs> what are you doing? So I just got up, just turned like, third down, get off the field. <laughs> <laughs> you and the shoe off the field. Get off the field. Yeah. I always ask your dad in that moment in the stands, did he know it was a penalty? Like, <laughs> like did you, did you, cause, cause parents, I'm sure he was watching you. Parents in the game, they're looking at their kids. You know what I'm saying? We had really good seats that game. <laughs> and it happened right in front of us. Yeah. Like it's, you know, we were like 35, 40 yard line <laughs> sitting low funny. down. It's not like it happened on that end of the field. It's not <laughs> like he was on the opposite side of the field. It happened. Right, right in front there. of you? Yeah, like yeah. close, like HD. What did coaches say? Did you come out? Did they pull you out that, that play, calm you down? Or what did they say? Nah, they, they couldn't pull me out. That's crazy to pull me out. Yeah. But now I got to the sideline and Coach Grantham came up to me and was like, I'm sure it like, was F-word No, I immediately, I ain't gonna lie, I immediately, like, the DBs sit kind of, like, in the middle of the sideline, yeah. like, on the bench. I went to the sideline and went to the other side. Like, <laughs> I didn't want to talk to nobody. Like, I went to, like, around the D linemen we're at. Right. And then, uh, uh, I think Coach Grantham comes up to me and he's like, you better hope that they make an F and field goal right now or something like that. Right. So I looked at him like... <laughs> Like, bro, chill, no, every, like, every, after everything I've done for you. Yeah, like, bro. <laughs> we've been through your defense the whole year. <laughs> Man, like, right. you, you got me playing cover zero. Chill. Dog, I, Footballville, I covered a lot of y'all. I did things on you when you was in high school. When those things happen, bro, I'm not your daddy. But I feel for you. Like, that wasn't <laughs> as bad as Elijah pissing on the, you know what I'm saying? I hit Elijah up after that. that was like, funny. man, are you okay? <laughs> I actually feel that feel for y'all, you know what I'm saying? Because I be wanting all y'all to win because I know how hard it is to make it. Um, when those that things- Broward County behavior is just <laughs> out of control. That's not even bad on Elijah. Like, that's not his fault they, that game lost either. Like, You know, what, you know day, what's like, crazy is like both fun. of those things happen in games where the, the team that had the player that did that they shouldn't have even been in a game Fact. like that. Right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So there, I think there's some frustration that's built in, not to make an excuse, but no, right. I think there's frustration built into that. And then that that moment happens. He happened to score. <laughs> the, the, the shoe happened to come <laughs> off in, in his hand. And when I was like really looked into it, and I had talked to Elijah after that, uh, his situation was really bad. Ooh, oh really? Yeah, yeah. his was really bad. Like he had death threats, yeah. and they came after it me. They came after my mother, who's barely on social media. They came after Shh. Carmen. They came after his girlfriend. Elijah's situation was worse. Ex-girlfriend. You in you in Mississippi, and that's the egg bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you black man did oh, that. I don't even know why I'm laughing. It's not man, funny at all. Yeah, talking to him and hearing what he went through. Like Elijah actually went home. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would have to get out of town. Yeah, it was, it was. He had to go home. Yeah, he, so he when I hit home. him up, he was like, he was like, man, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, I'm always thinking social media. I'm like, listen, bro, don't stop posting. Like, shock. you should be he posting in the middle shock. of this. <laughs> yeah, no, the one, I like, like, the one thing I do regret about my situation is I regret not going live on Twitch after the game. <laughs> 
there you go. I should have won. That's what I told Elijah. I say, hey, listen, as tough as I it may be, yeah, well, <laughs> the world is know. watching. If I was you, I would post me at Starbucks or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, not not with your location. <laughs> After you left, of course, get yeah. your head picked off. Right, and it it got bad for you too, right? At any point in time, did you feel in danger though? Like somebody really was gonna walk? No, nah, I knew to they you? wasn't on none of that. It, it just Twitter talk. That's yeah. it. That's the kid talk. That's all. It's all that's all. Me that's, after that's the game, I was a little concerned, just like some of the trying stuff to get I was out saying. the stadium. Yeah, or? yeah. I, we we uh <laughs> we made sure that was done differently. You was worried. I wasn't really worried. Like you never that. know, man. There's this this crazy this stupid crazy people. Did anybody say anything to you? Me personally? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, like, hey, man, your son just lost the they game. Said, <laughs> on the way out to what? the car. No, my DMs was destroyed. But not in person. Like, what you made it to your night? car, no. you went home. Huh? What did we do that night to get to the car? Pulled the car all the way I don't up remember. to the what curb. Did we do that night? Right I, when he came out, yeah. straight into yeah. the car. Yeah. Straight. I was getting yelled at on, like on the way out the field for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. As soon as I went to the sideline, people was yelling like, cause in in like uh, the swamp, you're literally like. The fans it right like here. It's right there. Like right? I'm on the bench. The fan. I could. I could dap up the fan like this. Right. So they yelling at me. Like my my D linemen was like yelling at him. Hey, shut up, man. Like leave him alone. Right. Yeah. That was crazy though. He could have did a Marcus Peters, but it was just too many people. It was. Yeah. It was crazy. Hey, homie, where you from? But now nah, it was just the everyone was pissed. Yeah. Everyone was pissed off. And normally, like we'd park kind of far. Yeah. He'd come out. We, right. We talk and then we walk. There's a distance to walk. I was like, we ain't doing yeah. that tonight. I don't know who's coming from. <laughs> people are crazy. Right. Yeah, people are crazy. So. Yeah. yeah. People are crazy. Yeah. I, I, I don't know, man. You, I think, I think about that and, and me and your dad have talked about this before. Set the stage. At this point, you were what? Sophomore, junior? What are you? When I threw that. When you threw the shoe. I was a senior. You was that a senior. Was my, red shirt junior. Senior you've junior. already put you've already put work in for Florida. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You 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 you're NFL draft pick. You you so you've done what you've done for Florida. Yeah. And it ends with the same fans on commitment day, we get Marco Wilson, your death threat threats. Mm -hmm. What did that teach you about life? Uh I think the main thing is just Really focus on the people who really love you and who mm -hmm. really there for you and really right. care about you. I mean, appreciate all the love you get, of course. Right. I always appreciate the love that I get. But in the back of my mind, I know that's not unconditional love. So right. now I'm just not surprised if that love is taken away or it's not there because, like, I'm not expecting y'all to unconditionally love me like my dad would. Right, 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 right. And then, and that's fine. That's completely fine with me. And it just shows me that right. everyone don't really care about you yeah. Completely. And it's that's okay. Right. You just gotta take it for what it is and that's life and Did you ever think about that that way? Uh it took me a while to really like take that kind of like outlook on it. Yeah. And the time of it actually happened, I'm just like, ah, oh, people are stupid, they're annoying me, whatever. They're yeah. hating on me, whatever. Yeah. But nah, it's just that's just what life is. I mean, yeah. them people don't know. Who, they don't know me. They right. Don't, they don't know who I am as a person. So yeah. why would they care about me, other than like what they actually see? So at that point, you so, had you you realized that they were fans. They were emotional, and yeah. you already knew what it was. Yeah. Like they love me when I'm doing good. If something goes wrong, <laughs> the, yeah. the very you same. Just, you just always gotta expect that, and that's fine. It just it could catch you off guard if you think people are always gonna love you no matter what. Yeah. But if you expect people that's going to love going to be taken away and you're okay with that, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, man, because I, I thought about that. I was like, uh, like, it ends with the Florida fans not liking you. You, you get out of here, Chad is indifferent with the UM fans. They don't know what to take. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, but it, it drove me to go study emotional intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, because to see grown folks react, you know what I'm saying, with the emotional and not think. Yeah. I had to go study it and see what that was. And you got to realize everybody everybody isn't emotionally intelligent. No. Some people are really clueless <laughs> to emotions and clueless to a lot of things. No, so. I think most people are clueless to when I'm emotional, I'm not thinking. Yeah. What you said about my mama? <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. Man, You're no longer when it comes to college football, that yeah. is especially so, man. I right. mean, I was 48 years old when it happened, and I learned quite a bit. Did you? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Like, if, if, to be honest, if they don't, if they don't have your phone number, don't really matter, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? You um, said don't matter. Don't really matter. You know what I mean? They'll be up and down. They'll be right. up and down. If he came back the next week with 
two or three interceptions against Alabama or a pick six to uh, win the game, the same people that wanted him dead would have been his biggest fans. Right. You know, um, and so that's just really how it goes with them. They care about the colors. Right. You know, Florida, what you did in that uniform. Beyond that, they're on to the next. There'll be a new group of guys in there afterwards. So the people right. who really care actually have your phone number that can call, call you and text you. Right. Not yeah, I people. did find out who really cared too in that moment. Yeah. That's a, yeah I, I seen a lot of people who didn't care, but I seen a lot of people who did care. Small especially group of people. Like, huh? Especially teammates. I see a lot of teammates who don't care. I see a lot of teammates who do care. Yeah. And that, like, that's important for me because now like I know those guys. And like I might not speak to everybody now, but I'm always gonna remember like how they acted in that situation. Like right. people that texted my phone. Some people pulled up to my house the next day, like, oh, let me go like and yeah. I was in college I didn't really like go out too much and stuff like so for someone to pull up to my crib, oh like let me make sure you're straight, like that was cool. That mean they, they actually Yeah. Yeah. You didn't party in college? I didn't do nothing in college really. Why? I don't know. I was just I was just hella locked in, and then I had a girl too, yeah. and so and she didn't go to Florida, so I just she didn't go to Florida. Where she was at? Uh, she went to Vanderbilt. Oh, that was all. That was all the reason to party, yeah. Like, <laughs> nah, see, maybe you raised them too good, Chad. Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> see, yeah, I just I was yeah I, I just Must really slide. wasn't I just really wasn't <laughs> on that type time. So yeah, yeah, I was just always be in the dorm, just chilling, playing the game. Yeah, yeah, and then, like my roommates were pretty similar to me, so, so it made it easy. Yeah, I had a long distance relationship. Yeah, yeah, uh, throughout college, the whole yeah, three. It was all four, all four years. Where's she at now? Who knows? <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> Who knows? And that's exactly what I mean. <laughs> yeah, you you learn some you learn some stuff though throughout the process. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Now listen, when you flipped in the end zone, that was a different feeling for me because I was had some content that I could create. I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm all over this one, boy. <laughs> he sent me some. <laughs> When you did that, I was proud. You know what I'm saying? That's so, that was South Florida, and it, it gave me a minute to where I could look back to high school and show you doing your thing. Um, you, was that something just in the moment again, bro? For completely in the moment. Emotional intelligence. Hey, here we, we're in talking about it again, huh? Completely in the moment. <laughs> completely. You, so you just, because you know that's going to get played everywhere. It's and crazy. I didn't think about that at the time. Like, I had I no thought of that in my mind. I was just like, yeah, I just caught a pick six. That's cool. But I thought nothing about me diving. Because, like, I would mess around and practice like that all the time. Like, if I ever caught a pick, I'm running to the end zone, diving yeah. in the end zone. Like, yeah. so it was just normal to me. And then after the game, I was getting an interview, and someone was like, yeah, your video is going viral. I was like, oh, for real. No, you was viral. I like, was part cool. of it. <laughs> Yeah. That's what you did. You dove, right? Yeah. No, like you, I you, said, the only person I know to go viral three times, but. <laughs> Listen, I think that I think that's a good attribute uh, uh, about you. Um, that was cool though. I mean, that that was cool to see. Y'all had on some cool uniforms. Um, see, all of that matters to me yeah, in my huh? business. <laughs> Got to check the drip. Yeah, all that matters to me. Um, what round did you get drafted? Fourth. You got drafted fourth round. Mm -hmm. Was sitting, waiting. Did you know you was going fourth? Like, was you high, no, projected I was higher? I was so sick. You were sick. I was sick. Why? Because I thought I should have went earlier. I still think I should have went earlier. Where did where you projected? Like, where were they telling you you were going? Honestly, that was all up in the air for me. Yeah? Yeah, I, I didn't really have an idea. And you went fourth, and, and you feel you should have been what? First, second? So I'll say first round. But in yeah. the time, I should have been like a second rounder, I think. Like yeah. second rounder, early third, I believe. I think you I think you made an impact your first year. Like, I think you oh, kind of sure. proved a lot of. For yeah. sure. I think you got to prove a lot of people wrong. Why is that? When you got there, what did you realize about the NFL? Um, you was like, oh, I could do this. Like It's football. Yeah. It's football. And just like anything else. And if you really just go in there with a, the mindset of, like, you can do anything you want, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to do anything you want, truthfully. Right. Yeah. I'm just follow the right people and just keep doing the things that got you there. Yeah. You're going to be all right. One day I had this weird idea that, I was like, man, I bet you Tutu Atwell is as good as Kyler Murray. So I went and looked at both of their huddles, right? So I looked at Tutu huddle, and then I compared it to Kyler Murray huddle. Mm -hmm. And as dynamic as, as dynamic as Tutu Atwell was, mm -hmm. right? When I saw Kyler Murray huddle, I was it's like, very, oh, he's from a different tribe. It's very different. Bro. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I was like, oh. It's insane. Yeah. I was like, oh, he's from a different tribe. Yeah. And we're talking about Tutu, who's in the league. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At 160 pounds. But Kyler Murray looked different in Texas. Hell, I coached against Tutu. Yeah. You know, I coached against Tutu. But uh -huh. 
as as high school highlight videos go for quarterbacks, right? Kyler's got to be top mm -hmm. top five. Man. I didn't think I was going to see anything. You know what I'm saying? The throwing, the scrambling, <laughs> the running is just. And you realize this is Texas football. This is just not some kid that turned up in Idaho somewhere, right? You know, they they moved from Texas to Idaho. No, you're in Texas football, Allen High School, right. and bruh, he's running circles around people out there. Doing he, crazy yeah. stuff. He's your he's your teammate. Um, yeah. You see him do crazy stuff in practice, man. You ever watched him? Was like, man, God. Yeah, he's wild. He always he always be testing the limits, like with what he can throw. Yeah. And stuff, and I like to see that because yeah. like he's not scary. Yeah. Like, I hate seeing a scary quarterback. Like, right. We got to make big plays. You can't be scary. Uh huh. So yeah, he always testing like his arm, running around. Like I like K one. Really? Yeah. Him when he was coming out, they talked about his height. Mm -hmm. You from a quarterback standpoint, right? Uh, you get a big six five quarterback in there that can sling it, and then you get a guy like smaller guy like him that can run and throw it. Um, what's the difference from your standpoint? Like, is there I one you rather? Honestly, harder against with a smaller quarterback. You think it's harder? It's honestly messed me up sometimes with him being smaller. Like, I remember one time he threw a fade ball on me. I I I turn and look, and I couldn't see him. Like, I literally couldn't see him. Right. So, like, I, I wasn't sure if he threw the ball yet, so I kind of, like, looked back to the receiver. Then I looked again, and then I just see the ball, like, just fly from – it's weird. If I see, like, a taller quarterback, you could just see everything happening. And it's like you playing catch with him. It's like, I look back, I didn't see the quarterback. I'm like, oh, where the ball at? Like, it's, it's hard. I think it's harder. Nobody talks about that. Yeah. Nobody talks about the fact that – the shorter quarterback, we always talk about him seeing over the line. Yeah, I, but to y'all, it's like I can't see him either. <laughs> like it's easy if I can see when the ball coming out, I can see everything happening. Right. Like, it's just ball just flew out. Yeah. yeah, nobody ever says that. You're not the first DB I heard say that. I could definitely speak on that though. Uh -huh, talk to me. I played against Mark McGuire's younger brother in, yeah. in college, Dan McGuire. He was six foot seven. Uh huh. And it was a weird experience because the first few times I went out there and looked, I was like, I can. <laughs> I can see everything this guy is doing. I can see the whole wind up and everything. And then it's like what Marco said, we play some shorter quarterbacks and you're just, the ball just all Surprise. of a sudden, it's in the sky. Yeah. I didn't see the hand move. I didn't see the look. I didn't, I didn't get a read because we're very much reactive. Yeah, you know, three step, three step harder. Right. Yeah. Three step harder. I'm like, oh. Is he, he is three step or not? <laughs> like, he could easily like quick fade and then right. go over it. Yeah. 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 So it ain't a use for a short quarterback to pump fake, huh? Who is he pumping? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> with the yeah camera, playing with the Kirk, camera. Yeah. I think yeah. the only thing is just harder for him if he can manage them. I yeah, think a, I think it might be an advantage, honestly. Have you had experience in the NFL, man, where you saw somebody and you like, holy crap, man, you gotta be an alien, like, like, bro, like, what was that? Because you've come from competition, you've seen the best mm. of the best in high school, but I'm sure it has to be guys in the NFL where it's like, man, this dude had to be born to do this. I ever see someone? I'm trying to think. Mm, I don't think so. No, you haven't seen anything out of the ordinary yet. I think it was weird to see Tom Brady. He looked kind of like a giraffe in person. Yeah. Like he's taller than you expect. <laughs> yeah? yeah? He's a lot bigger than we think he is. Yeah. Yeah? Did you actually play? You, who, who did you You can talk about Aaron Rodgers, though. No, yeah, no, nah, not by just seeing him, but with Aaron Rodgers yeah. playing against him, he like a, that's what I'm talking he like about. Actually Strange on the field, there. like he's like a wizard for real. See, that's you what I'm talking about. Actually like on that. the field, ha have you seen a level of football where you like, man? Oh yeah, Aaron Rodgers, my rookie year, I was just like, what is he doing out here? This is crazy. Like, <laughs> what, 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 I just what I couldn't even have time to think. I'm just playing football because he just out there running the whole game. It's like he was the ref, the coach, and all eleven players. At the he same had time. that much control. Yeah, Could you wild. see it watching the game? I was actually at I was actually at that game. Yeah. Um, and I swear he turned his shoulders. He oh, jumped. Yeah. He he jumped it like he read it. And Aaron went all the way through the throwing process and, and brought the ball back in. He's still pissed about it. Today. I was about to pick. I was about, <laughs> but oh, it's like, I was like, cause that oh, was a pick. pick no, this, this was a pick. And he oh, went all the way God. through the throwing process. Somehow held onto the ball and brought it back in. I was like. Damn. And you jumped. I was yeah. sick. Yeah. I was sick. I for yeah. sure had a pick six right there. Right. So Aaron Rodgers is as good as Oh, people. yeah, he's like that. He's like that for sure. What is it? Is his anticipation with his wide receivers? Or? I think he's just hella smart. He just knows everything going on. I guess it's because you out there playing for this many years. It's like it's literally a game at this yeah. point. Yeah. Is NFL more mental than physical? 100%. 100%. Why do you say that? 
because I was way stronger and lifted way harder and all that than I did in college. Uh -huh. But I didn't study the way I study now. And like, I don't look at the game that I would look at it now. Right. So I think. Cause y'all have, it, it's all at y'all fingertips. Y'all can go just watch any, anything. Mm -hmm. Like how does it work? You can go study as much as you want to study or is it mm -hmm. on your phone now? It, it could be on your phone, your iPad, yeah. whatever you want. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you is how, how good you want to. You could go up, you can literally go to the media people and just tell them, I want to see this. I want to see this game. I want to see this game from this year. Can you get it on my iPad? Yeah. And they get it to you. Yeah. Yeah. You utilize that stuff? Sometimes I do. I like to, if anything, if I ever can get like Revis film, I'll do that. Yeah? Yeah. You want to see what Revis was out there doing? Yeah, I like Revis. So you think Revis was real? That wasn't just I think hype he was the best and corner. marketing? I think he was the best corner ever. Yeah? Yeah. Why, why you think that? I just don't, see, I ain't never seen nobody do what he did. Like, it's literally, everybody's over there and it's just, we having one-on-ones on the field and right. I'm gonna lock you up. And like he the reason like all these kids got the <laughs> island in their Instagram name like everyone talking about island yeah, because of Darrell Rivas like he might not have been like as flashy as Prime catching all the picks but like when you talk about cornerback he's clamping you like Darrell Rivas like yeah. two days think, straight second person sit here and say the yeah. same said the same just said the same thing yeah. <laughs> I think two for their ago. era that's what it is and, yeah you know obviously it was Dion for my era right. like no one was really trying to be a cornerback right. cornerback was something they said well. You can go over there and play corner. You know, you're not really a running back. I don't know if you catch well enough to be a wide receiver. Go play corner. And corners would have number 47 on or <laughs> 42. They, you know, Damn. one piece of tape around it. And then Dion came in, came along. And you were like, oh, you could look like that playing corner. <laughs> that's that's love. And then not just like the whole drip. It's just how he played. Go jump over a guy, take yeah. the ball, catch, pick, pick six, high step. You know, they'd been pick sixes in the league, but just the way he pimped it out and just like, yeah, yo. He would bait the quarterback into yeah, throwing the ball. Right. And then right. just the persona built on itself and built on itself and then right. the gold chains and everything else. So it made a whole generation of guys say, yeah, cornerback. I, I could play cornerback. And so for them, same deal. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. This is the era of the wide receiver. But when you see Revis out there doing what, what he did and catching the kind of love and notoriety for it, it's like, yeah. When right. my coach says – Go play corner. I'm like, okay, yeah. Right, be like Revis. That's right. Yeah. What's, your, what's your top three? You already gave us Revis, man. What's your top three cornerbacks ever? Probably Marco Wilson. Okay. Revis. CJ Henderson. CJ Henderson? Yeah. Yeah? Dude, CJ in there, huh? What's like CJ at now? He with the Panthers. He at the Panthers? Yeah. CJ Henderson out of Columbus, right? Yeah. Yeah? What, you seen him do some stuff in Florida? Man, that's my dog. That's your dog? <laughs> <laughs> so we went Revis, we Marco Wilson, and C.J. Henderson. I, we was like that at Florida. Yeah. A lot of people might not really. If you cut that film on, I don't think there's nobody better than us out there. Like, we was. Who was it? You, C.J.? And then, and then we had Sean Davis and, yeah. like Donovan, and Donovan Steiner at safety. Yeah. But we, we had, me and C.J. came in early at the same time. So we had a rotation of safeties and, like, other. we had Duke Dawson with us at one time. We yeah. had Sean C. Gardner. Right. Who else did we had around us? We had a few guys around us. But. Yeah, you say you, you think y'all was the best. Y'all had some, <laughs> you had some fun out there on the field, man. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. I really like how we just we really just came in as freshmen and really pushed each other. Like we up 11, 11 p.m. at the indoor, and we just both started as freshmen and just we just both knew what we wanted. We knew exactly what we wanted to be on. And there's a lot of people around us not on the same time, and it's just it was always me and him on that time. Like, hey, we trying to get paid. <laughs> That's it was extraordinary what they did that first year. Isn't it? Why you say extraordinary? That's a, big, um, that's a strong word. Because of how they came in there as freshmen, started and they didn't look like freshmen. Right. You know, they 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 really came in there like they were vets. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, before him, Quincy and Tease were really damn good. Right. But they had to they had to get there. It was a process mm -hmm. getting them there. These guys came in day one, like, you know, we've been at this for a minute. Right. And you don't typically get that at that level. There's the, you know, there's a there's a greening process. Um, and they just kinda accelerated through that. Yeah. Which was good to see, obviously. Did you did you think it was gonna go that way or do you think it was his process would be like Quincy's on? 
I thought to a certain degree it might be. I yeah. knew he was coming in there. You know, when you watch and you're around the older brother, the younger brother is going to you soak know, up everything. Yeah, he's I gonna, say that he's, all the time. Yeah, they're going to benefit from you that. That's, just, from that's it, right? just throughout time. That's just the way that right. the process goes. But um, to say that I thought he would do what he did as a freshman, um, no. No. It was good to see. And I knew he was full of confidence. But to say I saw that actually happening, no. Yeah. Yeah, he got it done. Who's who's top wide receiver you faced in college? Like who who was really like that? You it was a, it was maybe a, a tough challenge for you. You know anybody? Like who 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 do you think like you were scared for your son out there? You was like good lord. No, never never scared. <laughs> never never scared for either one of them. No? I, yeah, I know the work that's been put in. I know uh-huh. the knowledge that they have. I never say oh well. Probably Devontae Smith. You went against Devontae? Yeah. That's yeah. probably about it. And you had to guard him like. Yeah, that's probably about it, though. Yeah. People was trash in college. Well, that's, <laughs> that is about it, though, yeah, Margo. Like, me, <laughs> that I, is defense. The, I, I did go against, uh, 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 what's his name, Mechie? Michi? Michi. Yeah, the I went against, he's good, too. Yeah? I guess the guys on Bama. But other than that. Who you got? What way Bama wave you got? You got who? Slow. Jerry Judy? You got Judy? Uh, yeah. I, didn't, I don't think I got. I, Judy left before I got yeah, there. Yeah, but you did get Devontae. Yeah. Devontae Heisman, right? It, it, yeah, that I, was his Heisman I won against him. Yeah. Was it them getting him open, or he just was 160-pound elusive? Like, what, what was it about him? He was really good, and then, like, they're just scheming up against right. bad college defenses. So that combo right. was just disgusting. Th- when that happens to you, do you go back to your defensive coordinator and be like, hey, coach, listen, they are really outsmarting us. <laughs> At the time in college, I didn't. You, you I, didn't. I truthfully wasn't smart enough to do that. I'll be gotcha. honest. I wasn't smart enough to do stuff like that. What would you think about the LSU guys? What? 2019. I didn't get much action when I covered them. They was yeah. good. I know they was good for sure, but I just didn't. That's when I went against them, I just didn't get. Who, who, who was that? I was in a slot most of the time on, yeah. on Justin Jefferson. Oh, so you had Burrow, Jefferson, and Chase, y'all. Yeah. yeah. But you was in the slot. They yeah, slot, they was for sure like that. The slot went but, to the league yeah. didn't he wasn't it all <laughs> they all went to yeah, the league right yeah. um so you played against that that team yeah the national championship year but mm-hmm. well, to his point though it, well, it it just it didn't pop off that way right yeah, yeah and it wasn't i don't know that they targeted jj a whole bunch i think they was just was getting, i think they was just getting off and like schematically like maybe the run i don't know what they did they that beat game. No, nah, we only lost. We lost by two touchdowns. Oh, oh, really? Like, yeah. We had we were out our two best pass rushers that game. It was at the swamp. What was that? It was the valley. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That stadium's not as lit as the swamp either. No, you think the swamp more lit than Death Valley? Mm-hmm. Say 100%. it in the microphone. Say, I bet you. <laughs> Death Valley not as lit as the swamp. I promise you, it's not. <laughs> it's not as loud either. No, I mean, I mean, I've never been. It looks we, cool though, for sure. Does it's it look nice. cool? It's a nice We're gonna day. make our rounds this year. Um, Texas and them was the craziest I ever Get saw. Get those hundred dollar seats like we got the first year. A and them is loud. It is. A&M yeah, them is loud. Right, right. I hate it. <laughs> I lost and them twice. Damn. Did you? Yeah. At and <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's about terrible. Oh. Man, they gonna have comments when they get that clip right oh, there. Man. <laughs> yeah. The the swamp holds how many people? It could go like ninety something. It goes. It go up to ninety. Yeah. Yeah. Marco, when this is all over, bro, like, there's no way you're going to be able to get 90,000 people to cheer for you. You understand this, right? I so wouldn't I- say that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What we talking about? You, we rapping? What we doing? I don't <laughs> know. I, I, I can get. Going on get, tour with AB, man. I can get a lot of people to want to see me do something. <laughs> This is classic, dog. I don't give you an outfit to go into my rent. My, I, I can't even. He doesn't. He right. He right. I mean, AB is more famous than he ever was. You know what I'm saying? So you could, if you're the right guy, you could, yeah, elevate after this after this thing. Um, yeah, you definitely definitely can. Uh, your style. What, what, where does that come from? Because your dad's kind of vanilla ice cream. You see it. Man, I honestly see old pictures of him. He's toned it down. I don't know what's wrong. Oh, he was. I'm going to have to kick it back up. You have kids, man. Nah, that's an excuse. And life comes around. I'm going to still dress like this at 50. Are yeah, you still? I promise you. Mark the tape, people. I promise you. I promise you I will. Where, where does it come from? You, is it your own style? Is uh, Quincy the same way? Quincy? Nah, he, he's a little me more and laid Quincy back. Quincy are real different. Yeah, he's yeah. more laid back. Right. I just, I'm just real artistic, and I just like. 
pushing the limits with stuff and just trying new things. Like, I feel like try, you got to get dressed every day, so why not try stuff with the things you're getting dressed why not with be, every day? Why not be different? Yeah. Yeah? You know, I like to go out and have people like, oh, who is that? Oh, yeah? yeah? You want the attention? Not but all the time. I just really like looking cool. Yeah. It's more like I like to like look at myself. And then just people happen to think it's cool. See, you see, football players don't get recognized as much, huh? As helmet, right? I because think it's of the completely because of the helmet, honestly. But I think that it helps your quality of life. Mm, I think it takes away from money we could be making, low key. Okay, so now we're talking about two different things, right? So, so you're saying uh, the the branding part of it, the people don't recognize you, so the branding part of it isn't isn't there. Mm -hmm. I'm saying when you at Prime 112. <laughs> and you don't <laughs> want to be eat bothered. Steak because yeah. everybody ain't walking up to you saying, that's Marco Wilson, that's Marco Wilson. But yeah. but you would rather have, you would rather be more noticeable? For sure. You can, yeah. get, you can get more brand deals. You never know who's going to see you. Yeah. It's more opportunity. Like if I'm going to be, if I'm going to be broadcasted to millions of people, I want them to see what I look like at least. I never thought about that. So when they saw y'all face at the beginning, that's not enough, huh? Nah, and then like you can't even take your helmet off when you make a play now. It's like they almost don't want you yeah. to be seen. I guess they don't <laughs> want people to be bigger than the sport. I, I, I no, it's about the shield. They definitely, if you realize it by yeah. now, yeah. it is definitely about it's about the shield on a lot of different on a lot of different levels. Yeah. Um, he's always been this, this kind of way, though. You know, it's not uh, the fact that he's in the fashion right now, and yeah. you know, the taste are eccentric is not. Right. too far fetched you know he was uh he can draw and you know if anyone follows him on instagram yeah. or tiktok they've seen some of that he's always had um you know that that ability which runs on my mother's side um and 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 his his right. mom's side too because yeah. his grandmother can draw as well so he, he picked that up um but he was a costume guy growing up you know? really yeah he'd wear the spider-man <laughs> stuff he'd wear the batman <laughs> stuff at he, what age uh five six <laughs> Maybe, yeah, a little guy. young, a little younger. He'd he'd go to Publix with his mom in a, in a Batman costume, <laughs> no problem. He'd force his hand on that. Yeah, that so was he was just um, different like that. So and that's that's just this is not for this, this is just how he is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you he drew a full on he drew a full on tattoo on his sister with a pen. He oh, yeah, drew I it. I did do that one time. Man, it was great. Was cool. We came in the door tripping because it was a whole thigh tat. You know, yeah. we Carmen and I had gone out, came right. back in the house, walked in the room. Big tap right there, like, yo, wait, what? And he <laughs> I threw I Vaseline on top of it too he, to make it look like she got. Yeah, man. For real. He, he you put drew, gas on what? Like Vaseline on top. You know how you Vaseline get the tattoo? Look, and then look. What you drew it with a pen? A sharpie. A sharpie. I did. I did like an outlining with like a blue pen, and then just drew. Oh, he it did the whole. He went through the whole rigmarole. She sat there for that, and he actually did it. And the two of us are looking at each other like, <laughs> what did we make here? Like, what's going on? So, just just as younger or older? Older. She the oldest. Did she let you do that to her? Yeah. Yeah. She always let me like try my crazy stuff. <laughs> it was a tattoo of what? It was like a tiger. Yeah. Yeah. It was so you could cool. draw, draw. Oh yeah. Really? His you... brother would not have posed for that tattoo. That <laughs> no. would not have happened. No shot. Not at all. No. <laughs> any anything you trying to achieve this year, man? You had what three interceptions last year, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you got any goals or anything you trying to? Honestly. It might sound crazy. I really just I stopped setting like set goals, like mm -hmm. stats and all that for myself because I feel like that just keeps me like after every game, like oh did I do this? Uh, right. My main thing is I just want to be as consistent as possible. Like I want to be as consistent as possible. Like you cut the film on, it's like number twenty is doing this right here yeah. every week. Like this right here every week he's doing this on film. And then whatever picks and, and stats come they with come it, with that? I'm cool with it. You just want to be consistent. Consistent. Like, you think that boom, there's no drop off. Like, every week, he out there strapping. Boom, every week. He yeah. filling the gap when, the, when the, the lineman blocked down. Every week, he taking the steps like this. He covering the receiver right here. He on the hip right here. Yeah. Just I want it to be undeniable that I'm just that consistent on film. Right. And whatever comes with it, boom. It's very, it's, very, um, it's very hard for cornerbacks to set specific number goals mm -hmm. 
you know, you can be avoided for, for a good part of the season. Or yeah. things just not work out that way or within the scheme of the defense. Right. You know, you don't get the required amount of action to meet, you know, whatever that number is. Right. So it really is what he's saying. You know, part of my motto at All Eyes DB Camp is consistency. So and that's you, what you teach. It is. You know, so if you if you go out there every week and you're consistently doing what you're supposed to do, what's what will come your way will come your way. Gotcha. You know, it could be a huge year of some guys have had their best years when they only had three interceptions. And it's a guy that's had nine or ten, but your best year was three years. So I mean, three interceptions. Sometimes right. you got ten picks because, man, you know what? When you weren't catching those interceptions, you were sweet out there. So they kept going at you, and so you had these opportunities to get the interceptions. So sometimes yeah. a two, three pick year was solid because right. you, you, you know, you just were on your game each and every week. And those guys watch film and like you might want to stay away from from number twenty. I do want team goals though. Like I would love to go to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl. You would like, that that yeah. matter? Yeah, I people would love think to go when y'all start Bowl. making money that don't that don't matter. T- nah, t- I for, I know for sure. Like I know how I am with my my homies on the team. Right. I know if we are when I am won a Super Bowl, like that would be the best thing ever. Like yeah, me and my dogs really just worked our ass off all right. year, and we went and won a Super Bowl. Like <laughs> how far did y'all go last year? I mean, we as far as the last game of the season. <laughs> <laughs> but then my, my rookie year, we went to the playoffs, though. We went to the yeah, playoffs. I, so the playoffs. I, I had two completely different like, years. Yeah. So it was cool to see like on one side of the spectrum and the other. Yeah, I did go to the playoffs. My, my rookie year. Your rookie last year. year no. And played who? Uh, the Rams. Yeah, I played the Rams. Yeah. And now it's, it ended there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, was it a different atmosphere? Did it feel different in the playoff game? No. No? Yeah, I try not to make it feel different either. Yeah. It's, it's tough in their out. stadium, though. I will say that. Uh-huh. It's tough in, in, in SoFi Stadium because they, they went on the road. And so you never know what you're going to get crowd-wise there. Right. I think if they had that game at home in Arizona where they've been thirsting for, you know, some playoff action, it they might have felt SoFi is always lit. Every yeah. game probably feel like a playoff game. Now. Yeah. So yeah, they playing day, music. Like, and But but yeah. if you were in Arizona, I th- you know, and they packed the house, I, I think he would have felt that atmosphere a little a little more. Yeah? Yeah. No doubt. Playoff football is different. The NFL game's not like college, though, atmosphere, I will say. It's still good, but it's something about the college. atmosphere college. is more ruckus. It's yeah, more, more energy. Yeah, it's love. I think it's the, the people just – it's just. I think, honestly, because the crowd is filled with a lot more younger people, I think. You think so? It's like all right there on campus. Like The guys at Texas crazy. A&M told me that their stadium was like the church. You, yeah. That's what it is. He that went, said, up, that he went said, over your head a little he bit. He said we worship here. What? Yeah. What was the <laughs> What was the craziest atmosphere for a game in college that you walked into? Like including home games. Give us a home game if that's mm. what it was, but Aub- like a road uh, game. No, nah, us it? us versus Auburn at home, my 2019. Yeah. It was. I think we were ranked like number 10, and they were ranked like number eight or something yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. It was like a top 10 matchup. 330 mm-hmm. CBS. Boom. That that was lit. Yeah. That crowd right there was tight. Who did Auburn have? You remember anybody on their team? They had Bo Nix, Seth Williams, Anthony Schwartz. Right. They had a pretty good defense. I remember the first play on defense. John Grenard came through, like almost sacked Bo Nix. He had to throw the ball away. He hit him. Crowd got loud. I'm like, oh, yeah, this game about to be turned. It was lit. I'm like, this about to be lit. Yeah. And Anthony then, Schwartz ever got loose? Uh, versus oh, us, no. They no. actually told us, they told us, this is our game plan with him. Our coach said anytime he goes in jet motion, the cornerback that he's jetting to blitz and hit him, even if he don't get the ball. <laughs> Had to go hit his dog. Man. <laughs> don't get this right, even, right now. <laughs> even if he don't get, even if he don't get the handoff, just go hit him. Right. Because he would get like he would get loose on sweeps, like on other teams. Like so, you've never been in a situation where he was loose and you had to go chase him. No, nah, that would have been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. I remember that trash pile, man. He catches a, and I didn't know who he was. Mm. Uh, so he catches. Well, like this a, had to be like junior, sophomore he year, like, like a slant. I didn't know who he was, mm. and he looked white to me. <laughs> <laughs> and he caught the ball, and I'm like, I think it was just Northwestern. Or who, he had to. It, it was the. Big it was game. the West. That it was the West. And I'm like, they're gonna catch him. He's white boy. They're gonna catch him. <laughs> no yeah, sir. To go. Go. On. Go. On. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, roster. <laughs> Like what was that? <laughs> like what? Well, and you a, saw Schwartz, and you're like, "Is this a misprint? Like, <laughs> who is this kid?" I, I really thought he was white. Then when I saw Schwartz, I thought he was Jewish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know, yeah. but that was my that was my first time I saw him and, and knew knew who he was. I thought it was like a 50, 60 yard run. Mm-hmm. 
I knew somebody was going to catch him. Cam, somebody's going to catch him. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. Not even close. And from that point forward, I realized that he was Anthony Schwartz, the a menace. Olympic track runner, if you yeah. want to be. Um, uh, and uh, that night he looked big, but he's not, he's not not that big. You know what I'm saying? But that yeah. night to me, he, he looked, I thought he was a tight end. I don't know what I was thinking. but it, Man, when he's smoking down that field, people start to look <laughs> larger than life. You know, our, his last year, he had a he had like a hundred yard pick six against Booker T in 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 Trass. Yeah, <laughs> and um, man, just a symbol of that night because we blew Booker T out. But he picked it off, took off running, and he's moving like how he's moving. And then he and Tyson raced to the end zone, like they really literally ran in it. <laughs> He leaned at the goal line. I was like, oh, yeah, man, this is this is out of control. Yeah. And you just don't see a, that happen to Booker T. No. It's just, you know, they had something, man. They you did. know, the year before, you know, he said when they lost, they lost to Booker T. Yeah. There was one play, I forget the kid who, who it was. He caught a slant, took off running. And it was he, Tyson, and Pat. They just start converging <laughs> on a kid. You don't see that happening to kids from Booker T. And they just moved in on him like, like a cloud. Like right. a quick storm, and then I think I Tyson think, punched, I think the Tyson punched the ball out. Ran up, punched the ball out. They recovered. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, man, Heritage is lit. That wouldn't happen at U school. We might have one or two fast kids like that that could go get a kid from Booker T, but they just swooped yeah. in on him like out of this world. So, now nah, y'all had something, man. You didn't you didn't have to do a lot of coaching, man. But listen, Marco, man, let's not let, let's not make this your last time you sit down. Now, when you become a Pro Bowler, right? We're gonna need you back, no, bro. For right? sure, for sure. All right. For sure. This is bad. Chad Wilson, Marco Wilson, Footballville. We outside, outside. Thank you for having me. Appreciate that, man. That was cool. You ain't come up here, man, not talking, man. 